All right, guys, in this video, we are going to discuss my budget and my expenses. And I'm not going to do any particular month uh, because it stays pretty much the same. But we're going to go ahead and dive into it and kind of show you kind of what a middle class lifestyle would be for an expat living in the Philippines. Stick around. All right, guys, so I thought I would dive a little bit deeper. I haven't done a budget video, gosh, forever. And there's a reason for that. They've, they're just so overdone. And I'm doing it because I'm still getting requests to do it. Uh, people want to see kind of what my lifestyle is uh, at with my budget and, and my expenses. So I'm going to go through that in a bit more detail. And uh, we're going to just kind of jump right into it. So starting off with rent. Now, I live in a pretty good size house. I would say it is about a thousand square feet, maybe a little bit more, I believe the landlord said. Uh, it's got a community pool that is shared among basically uh, five total units. One of the units is an Airbnb, which is rarely rented out. So really, it's shared between four of us. And uh, we have air con in every room. Currently, the exchange rate is sitting at 56.17 to the dollar. So at the time you watch this video, maybe it's gone up and, and the dollar is worth even more, or maybe it's gone down less. So just bear in mind that, uh, of course, that fluctuates and that can uh, affect your budget or your ex expenses. So uh, again, the rent is, I'm going to give it to you in pesos and also in dollars okay so the rent we're going to start off is 610 dollars us which is 34,000 pesos can't this is where a lot of people i get in the comments they're going to say wow you are just way overpaying and i get this all the time and if you want to reply and say yes i'm way overpaying you're certainly free to do so some people are going to say it's a great deal i think it's a good deal uh can i get less absolutely i could get less i could go out and find a place for twenty thousand, um probably pretty easily would it be of this type of quality as far as construction probably not so i am willing to pay more for those extra comforts uh the full security it's all gated i feel like uh you know we can walk out at any time and feel safe it's worth paying extra for me and I like having the extra space. It's hard to find a big place here. It's hard to find a good sized kitchen and a Western style uh, bathroom or CR as they like to call it here. The internet runs me 2000 pesos a month, about 40 US dollars. Uh, the water runs me about a thousand pesos per month. That's three of us. You know, we take multiple showers in the day sometimes. Uh, we have a washing machine out back that we're running almost daily sometimes, or, or at least Maya is. Uh, we're cooking, you know, and we're, um, you know, we're just spending uh, some money there. So that's what it is, about a thousand pesos. And uh, again, could we conserve? We probably could conserve a little bit more. Sure. Now, uh, electricity, we are spending about seven to 8,000 pesos. So yeah, uh, the electric, the one thing I would say is we like to be comfortable. So again, this is an area, sure, I could save money. Uh, we do have ceiling fans. And by the way, if you want a full video of my whole place, uh, you can click up above. I give a full tour of my uh, apartment and in the grounds and kind of go over some of the basic costs but this video is more of a deep dive into that so yeah and uh, the one thing I would say is if you're brand new this is the hot month too so these are the, the hot times but a lot of people coming out to the Philippines if they're brand new and they especially coming from a cooler climate they are probably gonna run a higher electric bill than maybe I would or other people that have lived here for a while me sometimes i can turn off the air con and just turn the ceiling fan on high and if i'm sitting under the ceiling fan i'm usually okay um at night i don't run the air condition all night long i usually run it for about three four hours with the ceiling fan on high and then i'm cooled off enough 
where I can sleep comfortably with just the ceiling fan. And often during the day, you know, we're not home, we're running around doing errands. When we first wake up, we're just opening windows and things like that. So that's where we're at with rent electric water internet. Now, the next thing uh, I wanna discuss would be food costs. So food costs, it's really hard to give you an exact number because some, some weeks it's more, some weeks it's less. Also depends on how much we go off. But on average, I spend about 100 US or about actually about 5,000 pesos per week. And that includes going to the market to get fresh fruits and vegetables. That includes going to the grocery store, getting our canned goods, spices, meats, things like that. And even the specialty stores here in Dumaguete, there's a place called Belchris and Lorenzo's that we go for Western items that uh, they don't necessarily sell in the regular grocery stores here, things that we want that are maybe imported in from Europe or America or Canada or Australia. And so 5,000 pesos a week gives us all of those things and uh, we survive just fine off of that. Um, eating out is probably the next big expense. I would say we spend about 10,000 pesos a month eating out and that includes going out for coffees. Ever since I bought a one of those Keurig coffee machines, I really, I just meet up with the guys maybe once a week to go out for coffee. Maya and I usually go out on a weekend to grab coffee and breakfast, lunch sometimes a couple times a week. So 10,000 pesos is enough for that. So that's probably the second biggest cost, uh, the eating out and grocery shopping, rent being number one probably, and then that being number two. Uh, next would be bottled water. You have to order bottled water. Uh, we go through a couple, probably 10 gallons a week, maybe more, because we get a lot of water. Sometimes we'll go to the gym and we can fill up our water bottle there or, or what have you, or we're ordering drinks or at the restaurants or coffee shops or things like that. But uh, that is really cheap. It's 30 pesos per five gallon bottle of water. About every two weeks we order five of them. So 100, maybe 300 pesos a month on bottled water. It's, it's very, very cheap. And they do delivery. They come pick up your empties, drop off the new ones, and you're all set. Uh, you do have to get yourself a water dispenser. Most of us Westerners, we like the hot and cold dispenser. If you go into a lot of Filipino homes, it's just a, it just holds the water. It doesn't uh, have hot or cold often. Um, but most of us guy, uh, Western guys, we want a water dispenser that has the capability of cold water and hot water right out of the dispenser. Now, uh, another expense, now this has changed for me, but I used to spend money on visa costs and if we're looking at visa costs the average expat is spending around 400 us a year so you can kind of budget that out on a monthly basis um, it comes out to around 30 dollars 33 dollars or so a month uh, for visa costs that includes your acr card which is alien certificate of registration uh, that's good for one year now ever since i got married i'm not on the marriage visa yet uh, we'll do that after my trip from the US, but uh, if you're married and you travel out of the Philippines and back into the Philippines with your spouse, with your official marriage certificate, then you, they give you a one stamp, uh, a stamp good for one year called the Bali Kabayan Visa, Bali Kabayan Privileges, and uh, you don't even have to do the ACR card. And it's good for one year. I don't have to go renew. So I have no visa costs anymore, which is fantastic. I'm going to the U.S. on May 31st for, for a little while. And then uh, when I come back, then we're off to Japan in August. Yes, it's a hot time to go to Japan. I know. We know this. <laughs> and uh, then we will come back. I'll be back on the Bali Kabayan because we'll be traveling together. And then we'll do the marriage visa. Or I'll do the marriage visa, rather. So... Visa costs, uh, no longer a thing, but if you are a single guy, then in staying on a tourist visa, uh, estimate around $400 a year. Can be more if you're using a visa agent, a visa service, uh, to go ahead and do those extensions and exit clearances and things like that for you. So 
again, uh, about $400 a year, about $30, 30, $30, 30, up to $35 a month is the approximate cost on that. Now, streaming services, uh, Netflix, I have Spotify. And by the way, these can be much cheaper when you're in the Philippines if you sign up for the Philippines plan. And uh, to use a lot of these streaming services like uh, Netflix and get the American shows and Amazon if you want to full access to Amazon. And I have, uh, I think, Hulu a couple bucks a month and HBO Max. So I think I spent around $50 a month. Yes, that's a lot. Uh, my sons use it back in the U.S., so that's why I pay a little bit more. A couple of those, like I said, like Netflix and Spotify, you can get cheaper by using the Philippines plan. By the way, you do want to have a VPN. I highly recommend Surfshark VPN. That's what I use. And right now, I think you can save up to about 76% off. There is a link down in my description. There's a big promo for April going on, a big sale. Uh, get Surfshark. Protect yourself uh, when you're traveling overseas. Get access to all the TV shows and everything that you need. And websites that you can't access unless you got the, surf, uh, the VPN on showing you're back in the U.S. or Australia or where, wherever. So, again... Check it out, sign up for it today, link in the description in pinned comment. Travel, now travel is not a thing that we're doing all the time, but things like entertainment are very cheap for us. Entertainment for us is eating out, which I've already included in the expenses. Entertainment for us is going maybe to a beach resort once a month, uh, going to waterfalls, which typically don't cost anything. And we just bring some lunch or we eat out, which I've already included in the expenses. Uh, going on motorbike trips up the mountain to like coffee shops. I've done a few videos there. And uh, going to the beach, which you pay for parking basically. Um, watching, you know, Netflix, uh, hanging out together. Or going out and hanging out at the uh, pool here. So entertainment, as a married guy is much cheaper i think now we do travel quite a bit japan is going to be um maya and i's fourth trip out of the philippines within the last year now about and uh so that's kind of a separate expense that i don't include in my monthly but when that happens yeah like japan is probably going to be a thousand two thousand dollars um it, it's hard to say with flight and hotels and food and entertainment yeah so those are things that extra. I don't really want to include those in my expenses or my budget because I want you guys to kind of get a general idea of what your monthly, without all these extra things, uh, will cost. So entertainment, uh, I'm going to put that at around 5,000 pesos a month because there's really not a whole lot to it. Now, as a single guy, I've also did a video, a uh, single guy living in a condo in Cebu, uh, that video can be found at the end of this video. You'll see a link to it. But that video um, did really well, and I think it kind of pertains to a lot of guys that come out here. They come out here, they're single. A lot of them want to live in a condo. And if you're living in a condo as a single guy, you're going to have less expenses overall. Obviously, with Maya and her daughter, we I have to purchase more food, right? Uh, eating out is going to be a little more expensive but on the flip side Maya also knows how to shop whereas a single guy was never doing this I, I wouldn't go really to the local markets too much Maya does she buys the local fish or she'll buy uh, fruits and vegetables and she is not getting that skin tax like I might get if I go to the local market so you can save money as well and uh, but as a single guy yeah of course you're going to spend less you don't need I, I wouldn't be living in a three bedroom two bath place right now i would probably just be living in a smaller place it's just the way it is i'd probably be eating out more though so i'd probably be I'd be spending more in that category i used to go out for coffee every morning and with that coffee sometimes i would get breakfast and then i would often go out for dinner so I was spending way more in that category, but spending way less in the grocery category. So uh, again, a middle-class lifestyle really 
is not expensive. Uh, gas for my motorbike, I spend about three uh, about 300 pesos per week on my motorbike. Now, I spend uh, about $15 for my traveling mailbox. There's a link in the description. I find the surf the service well worth it. You know, they scan my mail. I can read it and decide whether I, if it's something I really need, I can have them forward it to me here. If it's something that uh, I don't need, I just I can download the PDF of it and then have them shred it. Or if it's junk mail without even opening it, sometimes I know, oh, it's it's junk mail. I can just click shred it. So fantastic service. Again, there's a link down in the description. And by the way, if you head to my website, geointhephilippines.com, there is a free moving out to the Philippines PDF file that you can download with links and everything uh, to all the information and things that will help you out for your move or just even traveling out to the Philippines. Uh, travel insurance or travel medical insurance. Now, I go with one that's got 250000 worth of coverage and I spend about 100 bucks a month on that. Uh, Maya and her daughter have Phil Health, and uh, so a hundred bucks a month is what I'm spending on that. I think 107 U.S. dollars. Um, I pay that in dollars. That's why I'm not saying it in pesos. And uh, if you want travel medical insurance, now there's another a second plan. I'll put the link in the description as well. But there's a second plan if you're over 70 or you don't need 250 thousand worth of coverage and you want to choose your limits and deductibles, uh, there's a much cheaper plan for around 50 bucks per month, and you can use that. Um, there's a link in the description for that with the regular travel medical. If you're going to live here full-time, then you might want to contact uh, Michael. Uh, we did a tr uh, health insurance video. At the end of this video, you'll see the uh, video for that. And you can contact him and he can set you up on a peso plan or a dollar plan, depending what your needs are. And uh, he can help you out with that. If you're going to be here long term living, that may be a plan for you. I still use the travel medical because I travel a lot and I want it to follow me. And it also covers extra things that regular medical insurance doesn't cover. So that's why I uh, keep that at this time. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you know, there's extra things like bike maintenance, oil changes, but they're so irrelevant. They're so small that I don't even add it. But I've pretty much covered what you need um, to, to live a really good lifestyle. Now, I do shop a bit on Amazon, and uh, I probably spend about 100 bucks per month getting things from Amazon that I can't find here. Sometimes I order things in bulk or some things I want quality items. I don't know, for example, the special ergonomic mouse that I wanted. Well, I couldn't really find the a good one here, so I went ahead and ordered it on Amazon and they got the free shipping if your order is over $49 on most items and uh in less than 200 dollars, no import fees so something for you to consider things like clothes i i'll get uh, my clothes i have so many clothes I, I i don't even throw that into the budget but every so often i'll throw that into an amazon order get another three pair of shorts or a shirt or something like that so anyway hopefully this helps guys a little bit of a deeper dive into my expenses and my budget um, overall, I would say I never spend more than 2000 per month. Uh, the months where maybe I'm going traveling, it could go all the way up to 3000 On months we don't really do a lot and we stay at home mostly, it goes down to around 1500 But I think the $2,000 range is a very good number to live a very good quality life here. Again, you need to have yourself a, a safety nest. You need to have money set aside in case something happens. Travel, uh, medical insurance is very important to protect you. And, uh, you know, starting up money for when you first get here to buy a motorbike. Maybe uh, I moved into an unfurnished place, so I had to furnish. So $10,000 is a good set amount if you want to buy a motorbike, furnish a place. If you're not looking to buy a vehicle and you're moving into a fully furnished place, you could probably get by with $1,000. Uh, to initially set yourself up. So, 
questions, comments, let me know down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.